Wow. Because closure is the most important aspect in this life that uh-huh. we have, and I already know the deal. Because from being struck by lightning twice and then having open-heart surgery from because of the lightning and then because of open-heart surgery and having to take Coumadin, which is rat poison, <laughs> I had to have brain surgery. Oh, my God. So I, in the last 23 years, in the last 23 years, I've had, last 32 years, I've had three, one death experience and uh one death experience and two near death experiences. My God. So there's not a lot about it I don't know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I I I'm getting goosebumps right now just listening to you. Well, but you know, we all have these things. And what we have to do is learn to do with what we have. Uh huh. And the other thing too, let me tell you this. Okay. And this is I think what everybody should listen to. I'm going to be every person that I ever helped. If God couldn't come today and God sent me in the life I just reviewed, what difference did God make? Hmm. Okay, well, what, is, what difference that God would have made if somebody didn't die alone? Oh. If somebody had a chance that they could talk it through, and especially veterans. Because when, when the talking's done and the preaching's done and the doctrine's done, there's just you thinking about, where in hell you're going, not if you're going, but right. where in hell you're going. Right, right. Because a veteran, you go back and you start to look at what you did. Oh. Especially combat. Uh-huh. And I see that I can make a difference, but when my life passes before me and I get a chance to be every person that I ever encountered uh-huh. and feel the direct results of my interaction between you and that person, I'm going to feel the happiness that person has that somebody cared and the happiness that that person had that somebody came and took time and someone cared about their service to this country so Mm. and when i decided that after after 20 years of this i decided to create uh, the twilight brigade which is now one of the largest end-of-life care volunteer programs for dying veterans in the United States, and I have over 5,000 people in 22 states who uses my um, who uses my techniques. You don't you don't obviously and overtly know that I'm teaching you based on that there's a life after death. But what happens is people realize people realize that there's a life after death as they go through the training and they become comfortable. Uh-huh. And they help people. So everybody has this. And this is most, I, in the in the 30 years I've studied death, and I mean up close and personal, mm-hmm. almost everybody goes through some form of this. And, uh, and I don't recommend near-death experiences. <laughs> I'd rather hear about it than be telling it. Really? <laughs> but this is, uh, you know, they always say, Everybody always says that you um, you choose the life you're going to have before you come here, uh-huh. and I happen to believe that on uh, the, to be true because you design it both for for divine growth, so that whatever it is that the spiritual world needs to take this rock to turn this little tiny rock and to turn it into uh, and to turn it into a garden of Eden, mm-hmm. then. Uh, what I'm trying to figure out is how much more I can do to help. Huh. People have to understand there's no such thing as death. And I always say there's no such thing as hell. There's just different degrees of heaven. Huh. Interesting. Um, now, in between the, the moment of your death, was there any time that you were in darkness? Or was it almost instantaneous that you that you were conscious of yourself? being out of your body well i don't you know you got to remember it like this lance i had never heard of this uh-huh. i had no you know it's spiritual there was absolutely nothing spiritual about me <laughs> you know i had a little religion but you know by the time i was seven years old i knew i was going to hell at least i, yeah. I heard it every day yeah yeah and so i there was no mindset yeah that I could use or functionally put it into perspective. But 
what when I when I experienced it, the last thing you're going to think about uh, 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 in this life, and the first thing you're going to think about in the next one, is a death. Death doesn't even enter into it. The whole conscious point of death is eliminated the moment you let that breath out and open up on the other side. Huh. Yeah, there's no, you know, you never even, you know, you won't even think about it. You won't even think about being dead. It took me until, I didn't know until after the Panoramic Life Review that I was dead. Huh. I mean, you don't, you don't have a basis by which to look at it. Uh Uh-huh. You know, if you think you're dead and you're wide awake and more alive and more conscious and more, more focused than you've ever been and you feel precious. Wow. Ain't, ain't that fun? <laughs> well, you know, maybe that's one of the reasons why we supposedly drink from the water of forgetfulness. I, I, somebody described that, the water uh, that you drink on that side to forget what you knew or saw over there because it makes it more painful. You want to go back so badly. Well, I would agree to that, but also you design uh, obstacles. Mm-hmm. I tell everybody, and, and anyone who's, who's of the millions of people who've read my books, then I tell everybody, the first thing you have to realize is that you are a great, powerful, and mighty spiritual being. Mm -hmm. And you have dignity, you have direction, and you have purpose. Mm. But when you realize that, you realize you're probably a little bigoty, too. Mm -hmm. If I was a great, powerful, and mighty spiritual being with dignity and direction and purpose, I'd be a little uppity. (laughs) And part of the earth life is you you think that there's nothing you can get into that you can't figure out how to get out of. Mm, mm. And I must be on a, uh, a Jesus quest because I keep thinking I can get up from the dead, and so far I've been doing a pretty good job of it. <laughs> now, were those other, you had two more near-death experiences, were those all planned out? I mean, was that part of your planning from the other side, or did you get over there and do another life review each time? I mean, so... In other words, you had your lightning experience, and then you had your next near-death experience. Uh, did you only have to review between the last one and then? Went all the way from the beginning again. Yeah, all the way from the beginning? Yeah, I mean, it starts, I had. I went back through the exact same oh, dear. experience. No, <laughs> well, you must have known it pretty well by that time. Oh, yeah, but, I, but what was so cool about it is I got a chance to see the good stuff I had done. I was proud of myself, mm-hmm. Lance, because I had seen that even though I was still basically the way I am, yeah, I could see that the things that I focused on and the things that I thought about, they they had changed. It had, uh, it had changed, and it didn't change because I was afraid of anything. Uh-huh. It 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 changed because I knew better. Huh. Wow. So apparently all our thoughts, emotions, and actions impact every, literally everything else on the planet. Uh, uh, right now, this conversation is affecting uh, someone in Darfur. Wow. So I hope that the f- part of whatever it is that they're feeling, they feel I love and I support, and they, and our prayers, which is what I call willful conscious intent, yeah. That they're fine. There has peace and resolution. Yes. Well, <clears throat> I agree. I mean, I think those things all day. I, I try to write the books, like this latest book, uh, "The Secrets of the Light: Spiritual Strategies to Empower You Both Here and the Hereafter." Mm. I, I, after 32 years <laughs> of studying what happens when people are at that stage. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. Wow. Wow. And do you, you must see a common thread with all of them, right? I would think. Oh, yeah. And, and so once, once, that, once that happens, then there comes the joy of why the life is. And I always tell people, if you want to know why your life is so screwed up, you did it. <laughs> it's easy, right? You did it. Yeah, you caused it because you think you can get, you think, you think there is nothing you can get into that you can't figure out how to get out of. Yeah, yeah. And then, then no matter what it is, I mean, and I see some pretty tough times. I still go through a lot of stuff from uh, health-wise um, from it. But you know, it's all a part of me growing and me trying to better understand how what my job is in making the world a better and safer place. Mm-hmm. 
And then I have a beautiful wife who is um, as brilliant as they come, and she has a way of molding a lot of the stuff uh, that we that we write because we write together because she's mm. smarter than I am. <laughs> but a way of molding it to where it's really heartfelt. I mean. Um, I was really proud this year, Lance. We we got our our report on our website, Danion dot com, uh-huh. and we had three million two hundred and some odd thousand people to come and visit our site. Wow! <clears throat> and I just appreciate it. I and I write. We write columns, and then we put things on. Uh, you know, we put things on. If I get a mood, I have an article, I have a section called That Ain't Nothing. Uh-huh. And it's just me when I get really mad about something. And I expose things on it and I tell people about it. And then I have the world view. Huh. One thing that's kept me, <coughs> excuse me, one thing that's kept me famous throughout all these years was the boxes of knowledge. Because after I had the Panoramic Life Review, I went on a journey to this Crystal Cities. And that's what I call them. But um, the Crystal Cities, you know, in the Bible it says, Jesus says, in my Father's house there are many mansions, and I go to prepare a place for you. Uh-huh. Well, that's somebody had, Jesus must have had a near-death experience, because when I saw the Crystal Cities, I, I instantly thought of that particular verse from the Bible. Because here was these Crystal Cities, and they're unlike mansions, and they were beautiful and majestic. And I traveled to one, and when I went into it, it was like plexiglass, little plexiglass built block, and you could see the block, and each had a nuclei. It was like it radiated, and then I was looking around, and it was cathedral-like, like an, uh, an old European cathedral. Mm. And, um, and then these beings appeared in front of me, and they, they each, there was a 12 beings, and then a 13th being a little to the right of the sixth being. And this being, they were radiant. Huh. What honor and integrity and greatness and magnificence. The words are, are I'm trying to give an idea of what people, what these things were like. Uh-huh. And then the 13th being kind of designated what the deal was, and each one of these beings would start to glow and its radiance without would be the only thing I saw. Like it was, you know, like it had a floodlight behind it, and it blocked out everything else. Huh. And then this box, you know, I used to laugh, and this box, it would come, and it would open, and it was like a little television, you know. Uh-huh. I used to tell people, well, you know, maybe I died and just went to the radio shack. <laughs> <laughs> and then there were these events. I never knew that... It was going to be future events, Lance. I never was Nostradamus or any of that kind of stuff. Uh-huh. I didn't know it was future events. It took Raymond Moody to tell me that. Really? He called me on the phone about, because I just wrote it all down, and when I met Raymond, we uh, we started discussing it, and I could just write, uh, I could write it, you know, I would write about it and write it down, and then Raymond would look and we would talk, and these things started coming true. Chernobyl. But what was wild in the boxes of knowledge was I was li- literally, uh, I could smell the smells. I was like physically there wow. in these events. And I could see a lot of stuff um, that now has come true. And I guess people follow and read. Like uh, I have a new, new, new in the Secrets of the Light, you know, Saved has uh, most of them. Uh-huh. And then there's new ones in the, not new ones, but it's and when you come 32 years of watching something, <laughs> you have a better interpretation. When I first wrote them down, which is exactly I wouldn't change it uh-huh. when I was writing. Say I just I wouldn't change them because I needed people to hear the story of what happened to me, uh-huh. and then to move forward with as I was growing in this. Mm-hmm. 